You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a demo of No More Future, and today I have with me the very creator of No More Future, Sedge. Hi everyone. I'm Sedge, creator of No More Future. I lead a team in charge of a game, and I'll be co-hosting slash narrating the game alongside Nary. Yep, I will be the main character, and Sedge shall be the mysterious doctor. So... Hey, no spoilers. <laughs> Bonk. Right. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Alright. This story is a work of fiction. Any resemblance to animal people, real or imagined, is entirely coincidental. This story contains content that is not suitable to children of all ages, or appropriate for those suffering from depression or suicidal thoughts. Viewer discretion is advised. A dimly lit hospital room, in the midst of the fanciest hospital your family could afford. A simple bedroom, surrounded by gray walls and dusty curtains on all sides. Beyond the artificial barriers lie identical cubicles all around you. They're a bit livelier than yours, but as lively as they can be in a place like this anyway. There's no TV to watch as you wait, no games to play, no books to read, and no one to talk to. Not even your family's allowed in at this hour of the day. You can only listen to the other patients as they lament their woes to their loved ones, sobbing and crying while holding each other tight. You haven't paid attention to any of them for quite a while. It only makes you feel worse. You're sprawled on your bed, hidden within the discomfort of your sheets, tired and silent. Your eyes are red from all the tears, and the streaks they've left in their wake are still visible hours apart. The inside of your mouth is as dry as the voices of the nurses and doctors that seldom come to visit you. You're a shipwreck, drifting off in the misty night, waiting for the waves to finally swallow you whole, however long it may take. You already know that all these treatments are meaningless, that there is no saving you from yourself. Your family trusts in the doctors that they're wasting their finances on, praying to whatever god is out there that he may listen to their plight. But you? You who lays in this bed, who endures the painful treatments, who deals with the nightmares that orbit their brain every day and every night? You outgrew hope long ago. So you lay there, alone and afraid, your body frozen as if encased in ice, your mind stuck in a loop. Over and over, you repeat yourself, you repeat to yourself the brutal truth you cannot run away from. You are going to die. Good evening there. How are you doing today? A woman suddenly appears right before you, almost giving you a heart attack as the, as the sheer volume of her voice strikes you like a thunder in a storm. It's not her unexpected arrival that jolts you from, the, from your dark thoughts, of course. You've gotten used to people coming and going all the time in this forsaken place. Everything fell into a monotone routine after months of lodging here. No. What startles you is her voice. So much different from the nurses and doctors, so upbeat, so nonchalant, with a glimmer of something more barely hidden beneath the surface. Hardly appropriate, given the circumstances. Hello? You there? Come on, I know you aren't dead yet. The lady laughs off your reluctance to engage her in conversation with a cheerful smile. I know I'm asking for a lot here, but you can still grace me with a chat, can you? Uh, who are you again? After many days of relentless crying, your voice sounds raspy and coarse, almost as if you were coughing. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I know. The woman smiles upon hearing you speak, seemingly delighted for whatever reason. Ah, that's much better. Couldn't know I wasn't too late to the party. It's kind of hard to converse with a corpse. She chuckles at her own joke for a brief moment, while you lay in your bed, dumbfounded. You're not exactly in the mood for morbid humor like that, so you opt to stay silent and pay it no mind. Uh, give me one second. Um, all I gotta do is wait, just, uh, do a pause. Cause whenever I do a pause at a certain time, you Google, uh, YouTube will usually put an ad in for the silence. Wow. There we go. All good. <laughs> You decide to take a deeper look at the strange woman, which you haven't deigned with a glance since the moment you first saw her. She's wearing a lab coat of some sort, but like her attitude, it's markedly different from those worn by the local doctors. You struggle to unravel her species. She's most close, she most closely resembles a Siamese cat, with beige fur over her hands and neck, but something about her features leaves you wondering. You can't see her tail either, thanks to her coat. You wonder whether she even has one underneath that outfit. After some time spent calmly observing you, the curious lady addresses you once again. 
I guess I still haven't introduced myself yet, huh? No wonder even Sir Luck can talk to me. The woman extends her right hand towards you, though she likely doesn't expect you to shake it. I'm Dr. Shelley, but you can just call me Mary. I'm the head of synthetic department over at Pandora Laboratories. Got a bunch more titles under my belt, but let's leave it at that for now. Needless to say, I'm not associate of this institute or its staff in any way. I'm here as a visitor, and you're free to call security on me if I start overstepping my boundaries in any way. But I think you should hold that thought for now. We've only just started getting to know each other, after all. You've half a mind to have her thrown out right now, truth be told. You have no clue who this Mary even is aside from what little she's told you, and you're clearly in no mood to entertain whatever nonsense she's spouting. However, as you're about to raise your voice, something that she previously mentioned begins prodding at the back of your mind, demanding your immediate attention. Pandora Laboratories. Synthetics. Something about these words rub you the wrong way. Though you seem to recall hearing them before, you cannot picture their meaning in your head. You have a feeling the latter one is especially important, but... Oh, sorry for asking this, but I just realized I didn't have a chance to look up your name before I got here. The nurses downstairs gave me a room, condition and all, but they never did bother to mention you by anything other than your number. And here I thought we were the ones working over robots. The lady's witty line, which does somehow succeed at drawing a faint smile on your face, almost makes you forget that she just admitted to illegally obtaining your sensitive data. You really should have called security on this nut job a while ago, you reason, but you're not going to. Not just yet. You figure you should give this cat lady a piece of your mind first. Do the doctors around here give their patients info to strangers all the time, or are you a special case? Though there was no irony in your voice, the doctor laughs at your query nonetheless. My, at least your sense of humor is alive and kicking. I might have made it just in time after all. But to answer your question, let's just say I have my ways. Don't worry. Now, I'm not going to use your private data to sell you kitchen knives or low-calories movies. Unlike the workers here, I have standards. How reassuring. Oh, don't act like I'm out here trying to stab you with a needle or something. Like I already said, that's the job of people downstairs. All I want is to have a nice conversation with someone who, for one reason or another, managed to pique my interest. Surely you can understand this. I... Piqued your interest? The woman hesitates to explain herself directly. How about you tell me your name first, and we'll go from there. Unless you'd rather leave you alone, of course. You briefly wonder whether it's wise to share your name with a stranger you barely know, who still revealed so little of herself to you. It's probably a terrible idea, you reason. Everything about this conversation sounds extremely sketchy. You don't know who she is or what she's after, nor is it clear what exactly you stand to gain from this surreal exchange. After some deliberation, however, you decide that privacy isn't really a thing you care about all that much anymore. Besides, it's not like you could lose much more than what you already have. Fine. I'll tell you. My name is... Isaac. It feels weird, revealing your name so carelessly to this stranger. It almost, it's almost like giving away a part of your soul, in a way. It's probably just you being dramatic as usual, all things considered. Isaac. I see. So that's the name your parents chose for you, I take it. Sorry? The cat's question takes you completely by surprise. Though you'd like to ask for an explanation of some sort, the cat swiftly beats you to the punch. You ever notice how little of ourselves was chosen by us in this world? Our names, our genders, our sexualities, our bodies. Even our personalities are mostly dictated by the way we were raised and by whom. All things we never got to see in. We're born with them, molded by them, and we're stuck with them until the day we... Before she can finish, almost as if perceiving how unsettling her sudden interjection had become, she forcefully stops herself. Sorry, didn't mean to go there. Sometimes I can't control myself when I surround them like that. What I meant to ask was... If you could start your life anew, and this time you could choose everything about yourself, including your name, would you keep it the same? Or would you change it? You try to process what you've just heard, in vain. Her words bounce off your head as if she were talking in a foreign language. You understand what she's saying, but not what she means. 
What sort of question is that? The interesting sort, wouldn't you agree? More like the ridiculous. Oh, come on. Don't sound so glum. Humor me for a minute, and I promise it will be worth it. The woman's strange questions cause some stir within your mind. You cannot fathom a guess as to where this bizarre line of questioning could possibly lead. Even so, you can't help yourself from indulging in it further, unwilling to return to the dread and emptiness that preceded it. So, oh, what would it be? Uh, so here's where we make a premise to our readers. Uh, this story is entirely li linear. There are no choices from here on out aside from this and another one in the prologue. Uh, you can choose whether you keep your name Isaac, whether you change it. This doesn't affect the outcome of the game, but it does affect a few dialogues later down the line. Uh, I would advise for the purposes of this playthrough to go with uh, the given name option because that's the most quote unquote boring so that anyone who wants to play the game themselves can try out the second one and see what they what, what comes out of it. All right, you heard it here first, folks. This is going to be a more linear VN. I actually like the idea of that. <laughs> Too many branching pathways in a lot of them. Anyway. One choice here. Either you get, you get entertained or you get bored. It's that simple. <laughs> that sounds good to me. All right. I'll stick with my given name. You would, huh? I suppose that after letting so long of your name, it has become just as big a part of your identity as your actual personality. Also, the, the, the author asks you to do it. Or maybe holds a deeper meaning to you. Some fond memories associated with it. <laughs> no, do you tell me, by the way. Your gay says all I need to know. Either way, names are hardly the most important part of an individual. They're just there so we don't have to waste time sorting through countless faces and voices in our heads. I'm just glad I know what to call you when I report back to the labs. Okay, time out. Hmm? Are you gonna tell me what's the point of this whole conversation, or are you just gonna keep asking me weird questions like it's all standard procedure? Of course there's a point, and I was getting to it. Eventually. Eventually is much too long a time frame for your tastes, especially when you still don't know what this talk is all about in the first place. It's still a little difficult to speak up, but you try to articulate your confusion as best you can regardless. I really don't understand why you're doing this, or why I'm going along with it for that matter. Usually when people come visit, they talk about their lives, the memories we've had together, sometimes about the awful weather outside. And now you come along and start asking me all this strange stuff and saying all sorts of nonsensical things. It's not like your conversation so far is particularly unenjoyable. It was definitely out of the ordinary for sure, but not necessarily awful. However, given how little time you have left, answering this stranger's questions feels like an utterly pointless endeavor. Then again, isn't that true for all the conversations you've had on this bed? I just... I can't see the point of doing all this. You hear the cat exhaling a deep sigh as she rests her back on the nearby wall, a pleading expression on her face. I understand. Really. I know there's a lot going through your mind right now, and that you're not prepared for this conversation. At the same time, however, I can't really force slow down with you. I know you'd rather introduce ourselves better first, or for me to explain what I'm trying to achieve here in more detail. But I have some questions I need to ask first, and sadly I can't skip out of them. Time is of the essence. I've got places to be, people to talk to, and plenty of work to do. I don't have much time, and truth be told... She takes another deep breath as she addresses you once again. I'm not even supposed to be here right now. Wait, what? You're not quite sure what to do with this information. But then... Of course, while I have the luxury of being late if I want, you unfortunately lack even that. There is no telling how much time you have left in this world, so you need to consider what you do with it wisely. We can use it to have some regular chit chat, of course, and then we can go our separate ways having learned absolutely nothing. Or you could let me ask you a few more questions, even if they're a little off the rails, and maybe you'll both come out of this a little bit better off than we started. What's it gonna be? A little bit better off. As if there's anything she could do to make you feel any less miserable right now. Then again, it's not like you have a lot to lose from this. 
The alternative to this whole charade is lonely and uncomfortable silence, after all. Still, it's weird how she managed to answer all my questions so easily, even though I'd never even asked her. Either she's extremely perceptive and good at what she does, or she can somehow read my mind. Just to be safe, better not to think of anything inappropriate when she's around. All jokes aside, having pondered on it for long enough, you finally decide to answer the inquisitive Siamese. Fine. I guess I can endure a couple more questions if that's what it takes for you to start making some sense. Wonderful. Trust me, you won't regret it. You're still a weirdo, though. Huh. Weird doesn't even scratch it. But let's know if that kind of worms just yet. So, last question then, as promised. The lady takes out a tablet from within her lab coat and makes as if to write something on it. What pronouns do you use? What pronouns? Are you kidding me? What does that even have to do with this? Look, I know it's stupid, but no matter how this conversation goes, I'll need to file a report once I get back. Company regulations require me to list your preferred pronouns somewhere in there. So don't think about avoiding potential lawsuits and things of a sort. If you ask me, it's just a load of bullshit meant to give the intern something to do, but what can you do? If you really don't want to answer, I can just write... No. It's fine. You still have no idea what any of this is for, but if this is what it takes for the feline to start talking... All things considered, it could have been far worse for sure. If you really have to use them, I go by... Guys, for this run, I shall be he, him. And does this uh, affect anything in the game? No. Only the pronouns that people use to refer to you. Okay. Awesome. It's, it's just there to make you feel more comfortable, basically, in the event that you want to project onto the MC. Yeah. Which, unlikely, but <laughs> considering that they're dying. But maybe some of you want to do it anyway. So uh, that's the uh, option for you. Well, also, if someone picks the name Isaac, then goes with she, her. I've never heard of a woman named Isaac. That'd yeah, be, that'd not, be interesting. That would be a very strange turn of events. But, uh, you know, it's there if people want to do it. Yeah. You heard it here, guys. You can be chaotic neutral if you want. <laughs> chaotic neutral. I like the sound of that. Yeah. All right. He, him. Not even a second later, and the Siamese has already finished typing that down on her tablet. All right. I'll be sure to remember that, too. I'll hold you to it. Got any more surveys you want me to take before you finally tell me what in the world you're doing here? Usually people charge money to give their private info out like this, you know. Uh, fair enough. Don't worry, you'll be compensated for a time you're lending me more than enough, trust me. And yes, as a matter of fact, we're done with the boring part. Now let's get to the real meat of a discussion, shall we? Oh, there's a point to all this? I was starting to think you were asking me all those questions for shits and giggles. Nah, that stuff was just regular office bureaucracy. You know, the bullshit justifies the jobs of clerks all over the world. No. How about I ask you a real question, hmm? The woman leans over the railing of the bed, a sly smile on her lips. You can't help but feel slightly uncomfortable at her sudden nearness for some reason. Have you ever heard of synthetics? Well, that's certainly not what you expected her to ask, not with that excited, over-the-moon face anyway. Regardless, even now, you have no idea just what in the world she's talking about. She mentioned those synthetics again, a term that you feel as though you should remember. You try to scrounge up what little info you have on them off the top of your head, wondering why the feline seems so interested in them. I think I heard about them once, maybe on the video news or somewhere on the web. Can't say I know the topic all that well, though. Seeing as though you seem ill-informed on the topic, the cat steps in to answer your doubts. It's our latest science project over at the labs, and one I directly oversee. We've been disclosing more and more info on it recently, but it's no wonder someone who's stuck in hospital for half a year like you doesn't know about it. To put it simply, synthetics are bionic constructs made of both organic parts, artificially made of course, and mechanical ones. They're humanoid androids built to resemble an opera as if it were a real human. Uh, well, real quick, um, can you explain to the audience what a human is? Uh, so, there's both a practical and contextual reason why we use the term human here. The first is that if we were to suddenly, like, this universe is set 
in an alternate reality of ours. So using a term like human to describe furries would be very weird. Uh, second, there is a reason why the people here refer to each other as human instead of human, uh, but that will be explained further into the story. For now, just accept the fact that instead of the H-U, you get the Y-U-U for human. All right, sounds good. So, basically they're just artificial bodies for AIs with extra steps. That doesn't sound all that impressive. The technology's been out for a few decades at least. It has, hasn't it? I would know. We were the ones who first come up with it, after all. They were... they were... oh, now you remember. Pandora Laboratories, a subsidiary of the Pandora Corporation, specialized in high-tech R&D in the fields of robotics and software engineering. The vast majority of the most groundbreaking inventions of the last century were credited exclusively to them. You recall learning that in the midst of researching a topic for a high school project, who could have guessed that those seemingly trivial pieces of information you gathered back then would have become useful right now? As you ponder on that, you hear the feline nonchalantly continue her explanation. It acknowledges nothing new, you are right about that. As far as the eyes are concerned, at least. Sure, we've been able to house artificial minds and artificial bodies for decades, but what about real minds? Wait, real what now? There's no way you heard that right, you reason, and yet the cat continues with her spiel as if you did. Human bodies aren't built to last, as you're quite clearly well aware. Over the course of time, we lose our youth, our beauty, our limbs, our sanity, and ultimately, we're doomed to lose our very lives. But machines, they don't suffer from the same issues. They can continue to operate on and on and on, and repairing them is way faster, cheaper, and easier. In theory, through adequate upgrades and maintenance, even a computer from 100 years ago continued to be useful in a thousand. What if we could just transfer consciousness into a computer ourselves? That is what synthetics are truly for. Well, that escalated quickly. You can't help but chuckle as you try to process all the woman has shared with you so far. <sighs> right, out of curiosity, how much alcohol did you drink on the way here? The cat evades your sudden jab with the finesse of a cheetah. Huh, interesting question. I'd say about half a cup of vodka mixed with a little bit of lemon juice and garlic chips. Yeah, that sounds about- no, Garlic chips? Hey, don't judge my taste. I'll have you know, I've been to my secret brew over many decades of experimentation. Sounds like a lot of time for trial and error. Mostly error, given her description. Suddenly wish you two... Suddenly you wish the two of you were just a little bit more spread out from each other. Either way, this is hardly relevant information right now. Yeah, well, as fun as this conversation has been so far, I can't help but feel that, you know, you're kinda insane. The fun kind, but insane nonetheless. For sure, if anyone could attempt a project like this, it'd be Pandora. Even so, you're pretty confident not even they could successfully pull this off. Allowing people to transfer their minds onto a circuit board, escape death, and live forever? It sounds like something straight out of, a, straight out of science fiction. Before you can relay any of that to the serious-looking cat, however, she immediately shuts you down. Here, take a look at our latest models. Without another word, Mary hands you the tablet where she previously wrote down your personal data and invites you to take a look. There's an image plaster on the high-quality screen of a lizard-esque robot laying motionless within a complex tube-like contraption. It's definitely unlike any robot you've ever seen. Its shape, anatomy, the way the joints are seamlessly connected with one another. It almost feels like there's an actual human in front of you, mechanical parts and an unorthodox design aside. It kind of looks like a giant lizard, or maybe a wingless dragon with its sinuous body, powerful looking limbs, and long tail. What truly catches your attention, however, is its face, or rather, its eyes, which are replaced with an LED-like visor that doesn't let you see beyond its cold, black exterior. At the very least, it doesn't seem like the Doctor's lying about the android's, ex android's existence. Without even thinking about it, you make a swiping motion at the screen with your finger, revealing another image right after it. It's not much, just an image of the prototype taken from a different angle, however, it's enough to prod your interest even further. 
You keep flicking your fingers on the screen, moving from image to image at ludicrous speed. There are dozens, no, hundreds of them. There are different models, some that even look more mammalian than reptilian, and some of the photos were even taken in completely different environments than the first. The more you see, the more certain you become. These images aren't fake. This is some sort of elaborate prank, and Mary over there isn't lying to you. As ridiculous and nonsensical as this seems, synthetics do exist. You put down the tablet for a moment and turn to face Mary, whose large smile betrays her pride and confidence in her work. You wonder how long she's been looking at you like that while you peruse the tablet. After a few seconds spent reorganizing your thoughts, you finally manage to ask the million dollar question. Do they actually work? She chuckles at your query, having likely expected you to ask that at some point or another. A few more slides to write, if you will. You do as the woman instructed, and what awaits makes your heart skip a beat. A video of one of those machines, walking around on its hind legs, ordering coffee from a vending machine seemingly without a care in the world. It cheerfully drinks the hot beverage alongside what seems to be a researcher, conversing amiably with them. Just like a human would. What a strange voice it has. It's a little different from a human's, but you can't tell how. Regardless, somehow it still feels human. The way it speaks, its tone, its... emotion. This isn't just another AI. At least, not a C-grade, or even a B-grade. This is on a completely different level from anything you've ever experienced. So that's... A walking, talking, and very happy synthetic. Our first real success after decades of experimentation and prototyping. So, what do you think? Unbelievable, am I right? Unbelievable indeed. And yet, it's right there, in front of your eyes. A dream. A vision taking shape and form. Although you lack all the pieces of the puzzle, you start to feel the faint light of hope shining within your mind once more. And yet the pragmatic side of your brain still isn't fully convinced. It laughs and scoffs at what it sees, ever so reluctant to relinquish the fear and despair that it now knows so dearly. So you want to stuff me inside one of those shiny walking computers? You seem to catch on the things quickly. The way she chuckles at your remarks and strange vibes coursing down your spine. The cat seems to enjoy oversimplifying her work and explanations, far more than most professionals like her you ever met. You're not sure how to take this intriguing quality of hers. Why? What do you have to gain? Lots and lots of valuable data, of course. Like I said, we are still testing this technology, and we're rather interested to see what effects your new living quarters will have on you, among other things. This seems a little too suspicious. Where's the catch? Hmm? How much will you make me pay for this? The woman is at first taken aback by your question, but ultimately laughs it off as if it were nothing. It's free, kiddo. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? It's free real estate. You get a sweet new bot free of charge, and we get to study you from afar and gather all the intel we need. That's the gist of it, really. Ah, fellow connoisseur of Tim and Eric. I like. <laughs> it does sound rather appealing, indeed. An offer you'd be hard-pressed to refuse. But that can't be all. There's no way something as revolutionary, as world-changing, as life-saving as this would require so little sacrifice on your end. Your intuition keeps insisting that the Doctor still has a few baits hidden in, that, in the murky waters of her proposition. Is that all? Sorry. I said, is that really all? You spot Mary biting the corner of her lip, failing to conceal the doubt that has overtaken her. You properly settle yourself on the bed to better meet her gaze. It's difficult to tell for sure, but for the first time since you've met her, she seems unsure. It's not, is it? What else aren't you telling me? The cat sighs in a vain attempt to make her stress vanish from her face. She probably thought it was worth a shot. She can't bring herself to look you in the eyes as she finally answers your relentless inquiry. Yeah, no. You're right. There is a catch. She hesitates to elaborate. You can only wait, silent but, re but restless, as she ponders how best to explain herself. We... We don't know if it works. Huh? We aren't sure if a transition, as we call it, works as intended. Or at all, for that matter. What? No. 
You can't be serious. You showed me that video, that robot, synthetic, whatever it... They were, they were talking, moving, behaving exactly like a real person. But are they a real person? Or just highly advanced AI mimicking a real person? Okay, um, 30 minutes has passed, and my back is kind of killing me, so I'm gonna wrap this video up. Uh, would, uh, how much is, uh, left? You, just, you said another 30 minutes? Yeah. Okay, um, I will, we will, hey guys, we will cover that in another video. Sedge, I want to thank you so much for your time and for providing me with this, this demo. I'm really liking it so far, and your performance is really good, by the way. Thanks. But anyway, guys, this has been Neri from Drake Wing Gaming. I love you all. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye! Bye! -bye. Bye.